guys, it's been a while since I posted my last video, but I'm glad to finally be back. So as you may know from previous videos, I love fly fishing. So for this video, I wanted to make something fly fishing related. So when I go fly fishing, I usually have this bad habit of putting my wet flies back into my fly box, causing most of my flies to rust. If you're a fly fisherman hearing this, you're probably cringing right now. So there is actually a product that solves that solution called the fly drying patch that you wear on your shirt or jacket. Honestly, although this product is a good solution, I'm not a huge fan of it because I would often lose flies when things would brush against the fly patch pulling my flies off. So in order to solve these issues, I decided that I would make a fly box with a fan inside of it so that I could store my wet flies inside my fly box and they would be able to get dry and not rust. So when I started this project, I wanted it to have a rechargeable battery in it. But unfortunately, my knowledge of electronics is pretty limited. I wasn't really sure how to connect a charger, a battery, a switch and a fan together correctly. So I ended up buying a portable blender to take apart because it has most of the parts. And because the parts are already sorted to a PCB, I have a good indication of where the battery and the motor are supposed to go. And mind you, the charging port and the switch are already attached to the PCB, so I could have just used them as is. But after taking the blender apart, I started to realize that using these parts were going to be tricky for a couple of reasons. Reason 1. I needed to desolder the motor wires from the PCB and then resolder the 12 volt fan onto the PCB. The reason why this is a problem for me is because I have very, very, very limited experience soldering. Reason 2. The 7.4 volt battery pack is pretty large in size and would result in a very bulky design. So I thought about purchasing a lower voltage, smaller lithium ion battery to power the fan. But this would also potentially mean more desoldering and resoldering onto the PCB. Also, I wasn't sure if attaching a weaker battery to a system that was made for a much stronger battery would cause it to explode or something. Again, I reiterate, I know very little about electronics. So honestly, I started feeling very overwhelmed about all the potential things that could go wrong with this project and with using these parts that I got from the blender that I decided, let me simplify the first prototype. Let me do something that I know I can do that's relatively easy to do. Let me buy a 9 volt battery instead of going the rechargeable battery route. So I went to this really cool store called Anchor Electronics and if you ever find yourself in the Santa Clara area, I highly recommend visiting this store. It's like a hobbyist's playground. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. So while I was there, I purchased a 9 volt battery, battery clips, a switch, and 26 gauge wire. So when I got home, I tested all the components and noticed that the switch I had bought only stayed on when actively pressed down. When I realized that I had purchased the wrong switch, I decided to use a limit switch that I had lying around instead. I then 3D modeled mechanisms to make my own slider switch by using the spare limit switch. So then after 3D modeling most of the fly box and the mechanisms for the slider switch, I then printed out the mechanisms of the slider switch in order to test it to see if the slider switch would work. And after making a few minor adjustments and reprinting the parts, I tested it and it worked pretty well. I then finished off modeling the fly box parts and printed them. I 
tasted the fan inside the fly box casing, I noticed that the small vent holes made the fan's wind strength very weak. So I then remodeled the middle and bottom parts to have larger vent holes and then reprinted them. The fan strength still wasn't super strong, but probably sufficient enough to aerate and help dry wet flies. I then soldered the switch, battery clip and fan together. After that, I inserted all the parts and finished assembling the fly box. Then came my favorite part, actually tasting it out while fishing. So after testing it out, here is what I found. If I plan on using this fly box often, I would need to find a way to waterproof the electronics since moisture will get inside the chamber. The sliding switch I made slides back and forth too easily, meaning there's not enough friction holding it on or off. Meaning that if you throw it in a bag or something, something could bump against the switch and turn it on or off unintentionally. Larger holes in the vents, although necessary for wind strength, are problematic because flies could potentially fall through them into the fan's chamber. So I ended up testing it at home by putting a wet, medium and wet large fly inside and then left the fan on for 3 hours. To my surprise, the flies were completely dry. Which means success! This fly box actually works. So I might possibly make a part 2 video where I share how I make the second iteration improving on this one, but we'll see. Anyway guys, that's it from me. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Bye.